Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Gu from North Carolina A&T State University. I'm the horticulture specialist here. And today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, high tunnel strawberry production in the Southeast. Very briefly, I'm going to talk to you about high tunnels and the microclimate cl inside the high tunnel. That's the foundation of how you can grow things in high tunnels. And uh, since I only have a uh, 20 minutes time, uh, I'm going to uh, talk to you more about uh, cultivars and practices uh, for high tunnel production with the uh, goal to uh, produce in the fall, uh, winter and spring inside the high tunnel. And also I'm going to share some of the ideas uh, I have had on the focus of the spring only production of strawberries in high tunnels. First high tunnels. Uh, well, before getting into high tunnel, uh, we want to, um, I want to briefly talk to you about uh, the strawberries. Uh, we all know strawberries called hardy crop, and we all know that the June bearing strawberries, the day neutral strawberries, and the ever bearing strawberries. And we know that uh, ever bearing strawberry uh, is not really ideal for commercial production. Um, the one thing I want to uh, emphasize that uh, the cultivar selection is the most critical uh, for high tunnel strawberry production. And we, of course, it's really also important for our field uh, strawberry production. And there are different varieties from different states. Um, uh, California floral varieties are different from northern cultivars, including uh, cultivars bred from uh, North Carolina building system. Uh, one thing um, I want to uh, share is also on um, the chilling hours. Uh, people don't talk about uh, the chilling hour requirement for strawberry production, but uh, if you think about uh, low tunnel and high tunnel production, you definitely have to make sure that uh, your plants, your plugs, have gone through some conditioning um, process and they are vandalized so they can start to produce uh, you need them to produce. Um, I have had good lesson with that when I, the first year I started with low, straw, a low ton of strawberries in North Carolina. Um, the other thing is about uh, uh, the field strawberry production. We all know that in the Southeast, we use the uh, uh, plastic culture system um, to produce um, uh, annual straw, well, the annual plastic culture system to produce open field strawberries. And the majority, if not all, Strawberries in the Southeast are really for a fresh market, uh, very little for processing market. And in North Carolina, we know this fall planning and, uh, and only have about six weeks half its time with a peak in May next year. After that, or you mean before that, there were very little or no supply of strawberries. The day neutral can help, but the hot summer and cold winter is a big challenge for them. So. Uh, greenhouse, of course, you can grow almost everything, including strawberries. However, uh, for most farmers, uh, greenhouse is a little bit more expensive. So we also know that in Florida, uh, strawberry production is done in winter, uh, will be done by March. So um, however, um, we cannot provide all the strawberry need for the region. So the question is, can we really uh, grow and harvest strawberry in the fall, fall and winter uh, without a greenhouse? I guess the answer is yes and no. Um, but first, I want to touch a little bit about why we want to do uh, off season strawberry production, either greenhouse or high tunnels or any other protection, uh, protection system. Just because consumers want year round strawberry available, and strawberry is pretty sprout, and uh, most people do love strawberries because they provide a lot of nutrients. You can do a lot of things with strawberries. And uh, consumers want local, fresh, and if not organic berries year round. And uh, especially important, they want uh, the strawberry be available during the winter holidays, the major holidays like Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, and the Valentine's Day. Uh, so uh, at least in North Carolina, we can, we, we can see that uh, uh, the strawberry supply uh, is not, not always available for consumers. And for, for the farmer's side, uh, field strawberry probably about $2 per pound. 
And uh, off-season uh, strawberries can get to up to $5. And uh, our organic high tunnels strawberry, we, we could sell them for $8 or more, uh, especially during Valentine's Day. So that's why uh, my research, um, the initial research had been focused on strawberry production for the, for the fall, uh, winter, and the spring, especially the winter and spring. So can we do that? Uh, we probably can, uh, but in the open field, we know that uh, the strawberry have little growth in winter time. And uh, some of some places it just grow dormant, which is impossible. Uh, this map shows you the uh, cold harness zone map for the south. And uh, you can easily tell where a region is. I will not go into details about the minimum temperatures you could experience in winter time. Given the condition that uh, winter is cold here and the uh, greenhouse is more expensive. So that's where I think high tunnel will can play a major role for strawberry production. So the high tunnel is a very um, simply structured uh, plastic covered facility that you can uh, provide some protection compared to uh, open field system. It's not like a greenhouse, it's cold or it is uh, heated. So it's uh, totally dependent on sun, sun, sunlight as a soul, uh, soul heat source. So high tunnel is not ex as expensive as, high, as, as greenhouse. It's about less than $4 per square feet uh, material cost. And they only grow in, in, in soil. Farmers can get an ARCS cost share high tunnel. So it's much uh, lower uh, uh, investment to the very beginning. Uh, there are two different types of high tunnels you can produce strawberries. Um, one is a single bay, one is double uh, multiple bay. And uh, we know the, uh, the multiple bay high tunnels is really for, um, uh, for uh, three seasons. You can use to produce for uh, strawberries, which was very uh, beginning in North Carolina, they use this type of strawberry, uh, high tunnel for strawberry production. But it's not ideal because if you target winter time, those have no in walls, you just cannot grow the strawberry and harvest them. So uh, my research had been focused on uh, this type of uh, uh, high tunnels. Uh, you can see the difference in structure. I'll not go into details. So in any production, uh, you need to know uh, your, your climate, uh, your environment. So let's talk uh, very briefly about the microclimate inside a high tunnel. Uh, this gives you the idea, I showed the hard zoom map this is a zone eight in Goldsboro. You can see the minimum temperature here. Um, with a high tunnel, it was advanced by you know, 20 degrees. So it's similar to two zones. And in zone seven in Greensboro, you see the two uh, lower temperature here. You're talking about 20 degree uh, difference compared to high tunnel and open field. So it's very easy to see that uh, uh, high tunnel definitely uh, advance your cold harness zooms. And the other critical thing to, to for a winter production for strawberries, as well as for other, uh, uh, other crops like vegetables, is a minimal soil temperature. We know the soil temperature um, 40 degree is the lowest point that strawberry can grow. So do we have the temperature? Yes, if you can see from here. Uh, in open field, you definitely cannot, but in the high tunnel, 45A and B, you definitely see the temperatures primarily above 45 degrees. So we have the lowest temperature in the air and the lowest temperature uh, in the soil, which satisfies the need for strawberry production. So this is a summary, a very brief summary. So basically high tunnels will provide a one to two uh, plant hard zone protection uh, with row covers. And for three days increase the, the, the by five weeks, growing degree days, which is the measurement of the material stuff for crop, uh, are greatly enhanced, which means you can harvest early. And for light, we know light is the only, only source for high tunnel production. So, uh, and the PR is the, is, is the light that produces food. And uh, uh, our research showing that the PR is low in winter time, but okay for production of strawberries. And the light provide enough energy to maintain temperature inside the high tunnel for strawberry production that we should have seen uh, pre in previous slides. And also, um, 
in winter time, air, air temperature can actually go too high if you don't ventilate the high tunnels. Uh, we talked about soil temperature already, and the potential of the high tunnels will have a higher uh, humidity, relative humidity, so disease could be a potential. Uh, uh, Eating of disease can be a potential. However, um, from our research, we see very limited disease problems in high tunnels. How about uh, the production with, you know, in high tunnels? The only, the, the first thing first is you choose which variety to choose from. So for, for about two years, we did the strawberry evaluation for fall, winter, spring crops. So what we did, we included the eight varieties um, uh, with uh, June bearing and, uh, um, uh, and also day neutral. Well, this is the type of supposed to be uh, uh, day neutral strawberries. So we tried the different locations in single day high tunnels and we managed them organically. So those were three sites we did in, in, the, in, in North Carolina and that's the temperature, the extreme temperature you can see. This is a planet on the zoom map. Uh, we did this for a couple of years and this is what we found. Uh, for 2014, 15 in Greensboro, first of all, you can see that we were able to harvest in, the, in, in late fall and early winter. We also, also harvest until May, and you see the peak harvest in April. Usually in our area, it's supposed to be May. So high tunnel uh, will be able to uh, produce berries in winter and uh, advance the peak harvest by a month, so which is great uh, for farmers and for consumers as well. And also, um, uh, we, we found a difference in, you know, in the yield, which we'll talk later, but how about uh, the fruit quality, the sugar content? Um, you can see that uh, the 7% is, is uh, I think US number one fruit. So we are close enough. And uh, in early season, in winter time, or in May, the quality of strawberries are actually pretty good. However, in April, which is a peak harvest, you see the bricks actually is pretty low and the lower quality there. So that's something we have to work on. Uh, we suspect that uh, the fertility management will be uh, a big challenge uh, because uh, uh, we already started to produce and harvest strawberry for a while. So when it comes to peak harvest, too many flowers, too many fruits at the same time to mature. So that does cause the uh, quality to go down a little bit. One big challenge for winter production of strawberries is, cold, is the cold damage. So we did see a lot of damage. And uh, you see Goldsboro is zone eight and Greenboro is zone seven. Definitely in Goldsboro, we have less damage. So frost damage or, or freeze damage in high tunnels for winter production is not almost avoidable depending on year. So you do have some risks there. And those cold damage actually is, is, uh, with the, is under the cover of rural covers. So the extra protection from rural covers helped but uh, could not prevent the cold damage um, uh, 100%. And then just a little summarize uh, slide uh, for, for the fall, winter, and uh, spring production of strawberries in high tunnel. Um, for fall and the winter harvest, the best variety of June berry is Radiance Winter Star and then usually St. Andrew and Indian. For the entire season, fall, winter, and the spring, we have Radiance, Winter Star, Benicia, Comenial Reel. You see the Radiance and Winter Star are California varieties. Benicia and the Cam uh, is are from uh, California. And the neutral strawberries, St. Andrew and Beyond did really well. So, so that's our uh, evaluation of the cultivars. And uh, of course, there's need to be more varieties. And we choose those varieties just because those varieties have a lower chilling hours and we can produce uh, in the winter. And we did try some other varieties, didn't really grow, really, uh, didn't really uh, produce early enough to, to meet the uh, winter market. So for, um, for winter production, the spring production uh, in high tunnels, we should use Florida and California varieties. I mentioned this because there is one slide I share with your ideas about uh, how can Northern varieties to fit into the system. Um, and also we talk about the food quality could be an issue uh, in April. And we think that's probably the soil fertility. Ours in organic system, I think in organic system, 
we probably did not provide enough nutrients for them. And um, there might be some uh, additional flood protections for your, for your berry crops, for your strawberries. And we think the heavy duty root covers will help and uh, supplemental heating will also help. And uh, we use the 1.5 tons per square, um, uh, square yard root covers. I think uh, you can use the landscape uh, uh, industry use the root covers of three pounds. So that can help uh, with uh, mitigating the freeze damages. So if you look at this uh, um, uh, map in the, in the 30 feet wide high tunnel, we actually were able to make eight beds. Uh, it's a little crowded, but at least we can make six, seven beds. It's a one, we use, we, we use the plastic capsule system. And here is really the uh, spacing we used. Um, here's a management temperature. Uh, I will not go into detail, you have this slide. Uh, so our high tunnels are automated. So we close the temperature, uh, close when this temperature is below 50, 55, and we place roll covers. And uh, uh, we start to ventilate the 75 to 80 degree. Uh, so just keep in mind that the base temperature for a strawberry to grow is about 40. So below 40, they will, you will not get much. And the op optimal temperatures for a strawberry to, um, um, to, to grow and produce is 70 to 75 degree. And uh, here's what we did with our organic uh, uh, fertility management and the plastic culture system. Um, again, I will not go into details. Um, for over here, uh, you see we put a uh, uh, roof covers uh, in our high tunnels when the projected lower temperature at night is, is, uh, is around probably 45 or lower. If it's uh, 32 or freezing temperature, you definitely need to put on the roof covers at night. And the second day, um, no matter it's cloudy or it is, it's, it is uh, sunny, you have to remove the high uh, root covers. The good thing about root covers in high tunnels, you don't worry too much about wind. So it takes less than five minutes time to uh, cover and uncover uh, the high tunnel with uh, root covers. Okay, so we did expect uh, experience some pests, um, the, the caterpillars. Um, so I think the biggest challenge actually is the spider mites. Um, you really have to watch them. And so you can have a better uh, control over them before they can become a serious problem because high tunnel environment is pretty dry. Um, and if you use straws, just watch for some um, mice or rats, they can be challenged. Other than that, we did not not we did not experience a lot of disease uh, problems. So that's a good thing. Of course, you should, you should start with a clean, uh, materials. Um, otherwise, you can have some cancerous nose and other disease problems. And I'm not an economist, uh, but I did some calculation with my technician. So we think uh, the, the income from high tunnel strawberry can be up to $5 per square feet. Think about the 30 by 96 uh, feet high tunnel could be um, you know, less than 3,000 square feet, and it's about uh, over $12,000 net income, so which is pretty good for, uh, for one kind of tunnel. And those are those are the researches we, are, we were doing on low tunnels. Uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, touch that for this presentation. So uh, that was about the focus of high tunnel strawberry production for winter and the spring. How about we just focus on spring? And if you have a high tunnel, you know that you want to use every uh, square inch of your high tunnel space, and you want to use them as long as possible. So we we tried one year. Um, it's uh, you know it's it's just just set aside the, some of the strawberries on the side row. We planted very late, with the idea that if you have one seeding vegetables in the fall, and uh, for example cucumber, they'll be done by November, and then you plant them then. Because high tunnel environment uh, is better than the open field. So hopefully your plants will catch up and still produce. So that was exactly what we did and that exactly what uh, came out with uh, our expectation. So you see some of the varieties here. Uh, NCS uh, 138 is a new variety. I forgot the name now, they got a name from North Carolina. 
and that's that require a lot of chilling hours to produce. And it, it's, it will not flower uh, in high tunnel until probably in February. So that was really a June bearing variety targeting May harvest in our area. But in our high tunnels, when we plant them in November or December, one plant is over a thousand grams, which is 2.2 pounds. So they de definitely catch up and produce a lot in, in, in the high tunnel. And uh, it also advanced the, the peak harvest by almost two weeks, even if not a one, one, one month. So that gave us some idea that uh, you can definitely catch one more seeding of warm seeding vegetables or, or cool seeding vegetables you grow early enough, and then put into uh, more northern varieties. Uh, and then you can still expect to produce as, mu as much of the yield or more yield than the open field system. So, um, we did one year and uh, we, um, I'm gonna continue this research if I uh, have more funding or more time. So, um, so here's the table, I'll show you exactly what you do. This is the base after uh, the first harvest after transplanting. So it really, you can catch up by later planting. And also we tried to do low tunnel in the field with the uh, dual harvest in mind because we want to, uh, the goal is to harvest a quarter pound per plant before winter. So we tried one year, it actually can work really well. So that's one, that's another system we definitely can look into. I think that's all I have given the time limit. So this is my contact information. Email me if you have questions. And uh, um, uh, thanks for your attention. And also I wanna thank uh, the invitation from uh, Amanda and glad to be with you for the last uh, uh, 20 minutes or so.